love that you bring up sim racing. Uh, I remember my days were just full of sim, little tricks on a on a sim. You know, you download. The more you can do, the more you can practice, the more you can read about driving styles, vehicle dynamics, and I really encourage any sim that you can do alongside karting. So that's probably the main advice I can give in terms of sim racing, that you, you might not have had the start you wanted. You might find you're in a bad place strategy-wise. Understand why those setups are quick. Understand what it is in those vehicle dynamics. That's kind of one aspect. I mean, the second aspect, I'm here with Nick Cassidy, driver for Jaguar TCS Racing. I feel really privileged to be here because you are such a strong driver in Formula E. An incredible journey as well. So people might not know, but a Japanese Triple Crown champion. I don't know if you, if you, if you use that term or you believe in it, but you won Japanese Formula 3, Super GT and Super Formula. So a lot of different categories there. What was it like racing in Japan? Anything you learned there that you've taken with you to, to Formula E? Well, firstly, thank you for the, the kind words. Um, you know, I've been really lucky in, in my career with the teams that I've been with and, and opportunities I've been given. Um, Japan was a, a big part of that. Uh, a lot of good times, ups and downs. Um, missed out on quite a few championships as well. Always at the last race by, by a position or, or so. Um, however, yeah, there were some amazing memories. So now in Formula E, uh, Last year was almost one of them. Um, went in the missed out category, uh, but um, loving my time here and it's certainly a, a bit different. Well, we'll get back onto that later on, but we had a chat with your team's, team principal, James Barkley, earlier, who said that you're someone who's very involved in the engineering side. Previously, you were with, with Envision Racing, customer team of Jaguar. Now you've come over to the factory team. Jaguar, amazing history in just racing, like sports car racing, Le Mans champions, Daytona champions back in the day, Formula One team as well 20 years ago. What was it that made Jaguar the right place for Nick Cassidy this season? I think, yeah, when you look at Jaguar's history in motorsports, it's pretty impressive and it's fantastic that, um, you know, the brands come back and especially with Formula E. I, I think what's amazing is it's at a stage now where it's not, you know, Jaguar as a brand hasn't just come back, it's now so much success and um, already in a short time in Formula E, uh, challenging at the front multiple years. And I think when I look at that alone, it makes it very attractive as a driver. Um, secondly, I was very uh, privileged to, to have access to, to their powertrain last, last year and had a, had a wonderful season. But obviously as a driver to be with manufacturers is that one step more, one step closer. And, and as James says, uh, I love being involved in the engineering side. And when you're with the manufacturer, you have uh, more chances to, to take that uh, upper level. It's maybe looking a long way into the future, but do you find that side of racing attractive in terms of a long way post racing career in terms of team principal or engineering side? Is there anything there that sort of you're looking at now with a long term view or not? I don't know. I've never yeah. really asked anyone that. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe you think I'm getting old and past <laughs> no, no, it, that, no. you know, I'm also starting to get asked those questions. Um, but uh, I think first, first target is to win the World Championship and then they will worry about what's post-career after that. Let's get under the skin a little bit then because I find you a very interesting character from what I read and what I see online. Um, I was watching you at the beginning of this season in Mexico and I was really interested to, you had, seemed to have quite a realistic approach to that race in terms of it was your first race for the new team, anything can happen, there might be teething issues, you're not going to put too much pressure on yourself. As it turned out, the first three rounds couldn't have gone too much better. Do you have quite a realistic approach in that way? Or can you explain your mentality when it comes to that side of things in terms of mental management? And I, I do 100%. Um, I think it can easily be taken as negative, but I, I don't mean it like that. I'm realistic because I'm looking at things, um, bringing up concerns because I want to focus on them and, and make sure that they turn from a negative to a positive. Um, it's the same with weakness. I think you can definitely sometimes work on weaknesses and, and make them a strength of yours um, and anything in life. So that's, I guess, more how I approach it. Um, maybe it's taken the wrong, wrong way from externally, but internally uh, it's quite productive for me. I think. Yeah, I think it's quite, a ref for me, it's quite a refreshing approach to hear a drive be like that. And I, you know, in my karting career when I was growing up and also did a lot of sim racing, there's a lot of different personalities. Having a big, bold, brash, very maybe overconfident personality is one I see a lot. And yeah. it seems like you, you have a slightly different approach to things, which is interesting. I don't know if you have any advice to kids maybe going through the karting formulas or people, you know, on the sims, 
what they can do to you know help themselves goals and objectives and improve themselves in a way that's sustainable if that makes sense um i mean i love that you bring up sim racing uh, i remember when, when i was in karting my my days were just full of sim um i remember getting on r factor like you know 2007 2008 and 4 p.m till midnight 1 a.m was just r factor um uh, i loved it uh I probably don't do enough these days. I do a lot more at the factory and a lot more um, with the race team. But all I can say is I, I really encourage any sim that you can do alongside karting. Um, karting is not acceptable for everyone, but I think simulators are. And um, the more you can do, the more you can practice, the more you can read about driving styles, vehicle dynamics, and, and try understand that side from a reality, not just the game, I think is, is really important. Um, and then I think once you get the opportunities, um, super difficult to find and it's, it's tough to say to people go out and take an opportunity because I understand it's not possible always, but if you get an opportunity in a, in a racing car, try to understand the differences between a sim and a racing car. And, and um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Yeah. It might sound a bit vague, but I think it's um, super important to, to always look at what people are doing in, in real racing and what you're doing on it. Maybe just to draw into it, is there one aspect of sim racing that is a real, really helpful because it's cheaper and more accessible? And is there one aspect that people should be aware of that it's not like the real thing? My, my big thing is you can certainly have um, little tricks on a, on a sim. You know, you download setups off the internet, you, you download the fast guys setups. I think if you want to apply that to real racing, understand why those setups are quick understand what it is in those vehicle dynamics. That's kind of one aspect. And then the second aspect in relating it to, to reality is uh, back in the day with R Factor, I, I had Mosaic plugins and always just looking at data. Um, and then it meant that when I was coming to racing for the first time and trying to understand my strengths and weaknesses, you're looking at, at data and you can relate to that a lot easier because you've already had that experience through, through sim racing. That's really interesting. I think a lot of people watching, you might just be hot lapping and thinking it's about just grinding that time. But if you take that time to look under the skin, look at the setups and why it's working, you know, if you want to get to this level, you need to know how to feed back to your engineer. And James Barkley was very complimentary on how you do that. But I'd like to also just get on the skin of some stuff last season. Um, you know, the last race in London, you won the last race in London, you came second in the championship, but the day before, you know, the, I was there, so I couldn't hear the team radio at the time, but the team radio was kind of heartbreaking because the team dynamics and what you were trying to achieve as a team in terms of you and Sebastian. Um, has anything changed? Did you learn anything from that that's changed you? Or was it just, has it washed over? Or because it was such a pivotal point in your career and, you know, ultimately that the team didn't get the results it wanted. Would you have changed anything? Or it seemed like such a dramatic moment to listen back and your heart felt sort of radio mesh at the time where you said I'm a team player I've always done everything for the team yeah I, I think I can be quite proud of those actions in a way because ultimately I lost the championship in Rome um, at, at top I mean I was second at the time in Rome I was, I was taken out and, and I was leading the race I was leading the championship you know in that race and that put me a lot of points behind going into London and, and realistically I needed Jake to have a bad weekend. Ultimately, as it turned out, I probably could have won the championship winning that Saturday race. Um, ultimately, I gave up the win to, to help my team and to try make us have a one-two, knowing the team championship was important. Um, yeah, it's, it is heartbreaking because I don't think that um, the it was reciprocal. reciprocal. Yeah. Um, I think that they actually got the result they wanted anyway, so they didn't care too much. But well, you left Envision with them winning the team championship, and yeah, I mean, I've, I've just got to kind of put that to a side. Be proud of my own actions. Be proud of what I was intending to do, and I wasn't selfish. Um, a lot of people told me that I should have been, and I should be more in the future. But I think that's kind of how I am as a human. That I. I am extremely competitive, but I do think a lot for my team. Um, here I am at Jaguar TCS Racing, and I, I think I look at the relationship with Mitch and I, I think it's very strong. Um, I really enjoy the support from, from James, from, from the guys here as well. And, and I hope that you know, we can be in the same position again, fighting for the team's championship, drivers' championship, um, and things will be a bit different.
yeah, for what it's worth, you were my pick at the beginning of the season to win the whole thing. Thank I you. just felt like the underlying confidence and looked very reassured coming to the season, the, the rise as well. And one point I want to pick out from this season was from um, Sao Paulo, where we saw the dramatic crash that you had. We saw there's a little bit of damage early on you had on the front wing early in the race. I don't know if the crash you had was because of that, but I just want to understand the mentality again for a lot of people sim racing where you don't have the consequence of going into the wall like that. Yeah. When you had that damage on your front wing, were you in any way worried that that could happen or do you understand it and shut it out or do you have to be 100% just regardless? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good question. Um, it suddenly had communication and I was, I was concerned early in the race. I knew that I'd touched my front wing. Um, I'd seen a piece fly off, which turned out to be the end plate. Um, ultimately, um, yeah, I mean, in, in reality, you've got parts of the car that are fragile. Um, with stuff Paulo, the nature of the track, you, you do go from quite high speeds to stopping quite a lot. Um, with Formula E, if I can give probably a bit more background, the more you stop at the apex um, and the lower your minimum speed is, the less efficient you are. Yeah. So I'm trying to roll the corners as much as I can. And I was probably not aggressive when it came to passing, but I was aggressive with the kind of efficiency that I was trying to achieve. Yeah. And it meant that I, I touched the front wing a couple of times. I ended up being in a position where my front wing was say, critical, but I was okay. Um, but earlier in the lap from when I crashed, I was P6 at the time, I was started P9, I hadn't done my attacks, and I really needed to go forward a little bit more to, for our strategy to work to achieve the attacks. Um, I went for a move on De Costa, a bit half-hearted, a bit under a bit of pressure to make that done, and I touched it. So from that point where I touched De Costa, half a lap later I, I was in the wall. Um, I think I learned a lot from that, meaning Sometimes you're not really in an ideal situation in a race, but you can't let that affect what you, you do next. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the main advice that I can give in terms of sim racing, that you, you might not have had the start you wanted. You might find you're in a, a bad place strategy-wise, but you can't allow that to put more pressure on yourself yeah. and, and take an action that you not, wouldn't normally take. Well, Nick, it's been absolutely fascinating to hear, particularly your mental side of racing and how you approach it and the realism. And like I said, you were my pick at the beginning. Anyone who's playing along on the Formula E predictor app, just follow me and choose Nick to, <laughs> to win. Well, thanks very much. We're here at Masano. Just final word. And any any thoughts about your opportunities here for Jaguar TCS Racing? Oh, uh, I'm gonna. I want. I, I've loved this chat. I want to end on a positive <laughs> note. But uh, I do think this is gonna be a tough weekend for us. Porsche, Porsche. I think this type of circuit can be very, very strong. Um, let's see what we can do. Cool. Well, best of luck, Nick. And um, yeah, hopefully one better this season at the end of the year. Thanks so much. Cool. Cheers. Thanks.